G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza, I'm Jazza and today I'm going to invite you to come with me on a trip back through time to look at my glorious past. Humble beginnings is probably a, a better pick. Yeah, let's go with that. I do think it's really fun every now and then to just take a step back and look where you came from and just see that journey that took you to where you are. And I am a bit of an art hoarder. I actually ugh, have a filing cabinet full of artwork that I've stored ever since I was about 11 years old. I'm gonna qualify a time frame. I'm gonna say between when I was 11 and when I turned 18. Now before we dive into the activity of today's video, I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video and encourage you guys to go check them out. If I had access to Skillshare in this period of my life from 11 to 18, I'd probably be twice the artist I am now. I relied a lot on self-teaching and there weren't many resources available to me as I grew up. Skillshare, however, is a place with over 18,000 classes in illustration, drawing, design, and more. And in just the few recent years of using Skillshare, I've learned so many tips and tricks of digital art and traditional art and a whole bunch of different things that may have taken me a long time to learn otherwise or that I just never came across in my over a decade of self-teaching. If you use the link in the card and in the description you can get two months of premium Skillshare membership completely free. You can cancel at any time and you can explore all of their courses and classes including mine. I have two classes that I've taught on Skillshare, one on being a YouTuber, the other on presenting to camera and you can go to Skillshare to check out classes that you want to learn and learn from experts in their fields and teach your own skills and things that you're confident in and even make a little bit of money on the side from your side hustle. So go check out Skillshare with the link in the card and in the description. I can highly recommend Skillshare and their courses, especially mine. I'll link to those in the description as well. Let's jump into the activity of today and we're going to start off at age 11 to 12. Now I always look back at this era in my life as genuinely like the, the year and time that my creative process really started. I always liked drawing a little bit before then, but it was at this point that I really just got stuck into it. And I think it's because I transitioned into high school and had no friends and sort of became chubby and a bit of an outcast and spent most of my time in the library and drawing in the canteen area at lunchtime. So I guess you could say loneliness led to my career. And now I'm surrounded by many friends watching this. I mean, I, I guess I'm, Still sort of alone, but not really, because internet friends count too, I think. So I've categorized my filing cabinet into sketches and final art. So let's just open up the sketches folder. This is where I started to play around with original characters. I forget what this guy's name is, but you will find some more of him in here, I think. Now, one of the things that really tied into me pushing myself creatively was coming up with characters and coming up with specifically series. Uh, not that they would ever turn into anything, but this is one that I called uh, Cedric the Strong, there you go, Cedric the Strong. Copyright, it's copyright. Body bits, there you go. I draw all the body bits. As you can see, the same interests I had then, I have now. I'm still interested in like, you know, medieval crap. And this is just so cool, like I was starting to experiment with expression sheets and just learning to create characters that I could reuse. Ooh, what is this? Um, <laughs> oh boy. I love how with this illustration, we've just got no <laughs> written next to him. This was when I was conceptualizing a character that I would eventually try and turn into a comic book uh, series. We'll get to that later. And then we just have uh, miscellaneous other things. I think I was wanting to get into like Dungeons and Dragons, but my brother didn't let me play with him and his friends. So I just came up with my own characters and pretended I had friends I could play with. Kind of like I do now. Oh, 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 here we go. This is another character I thought I'd turn into a series thing and didn't. So then my sketches. Let's go to final art. This was totally not copied. At the age of 11, I totally drew this with no references at all. Okay, so remember that character I said would, would come up later? Well, these are all my final artworks of that character. I don't remember his name, but he was some sort of alien dude. And uh, he, he was, he was like a cool guy. He said things like, just how I like him, medium rare. Ooh, a large wood. This is one of the reasons why I say to people who are developing their artistic skills, don't be worried about copying stuff. It's one of the ways you learn and also it's motivating. You feel like you did something cool at the end of it. Whether it was entirely of your own making or not doesn't really matter as much as just the learning process. And sometimes it's important to learn to just enjoy the result. This isn't even my final form. <laughs> as you can see, I borrowed a lot. Here's a cowboy. 
Cool. I had like this whole sketchbook of these characters that I used to show off with pride as if I uh, invented them or made up the poses or whatever. I copied most of these. All right, next we have 2002. I think this was meant to be Michael Jackson. Close enough. A typical guy. My mom had a car crash last night. Is she okay? No, she is in hospital. I meant the car. I was hilarious. Keep in mind I was 12, but at the time I was thinking I'm gonna make these comic strips and send them into newspapers and get published. Obviously, I mean, as you can tell, it's like not really a standard that would be published in newspapers, but having like projects like that really kept me going and, and like really excited to make stuff. Man, I have held on to a lot of old crap. Oh, here's another original character. His name was Kirosu, I think I called him. Just sounded Japanese. <laughs> this is when I was getting serious about my Derek original character. I was trying to do it all like crisp and clean and then I was gonna color it digitally and add the text and word bubbles digitally. I never did it. Now, this was that original character, Derek Fastings, but this apparently was an avatar or illustration I did of the cartoon version of me. Now, I don't know about you, but I can see some similarities. Okay, so this is one of my favorite little gems that I've held on to. This was the first chapter of the how to draw book I was writing when I was 12 years old. Chapter one on faces and like, I just, I love that I still have this because I actually have a how to draw book. Like how fun is that? Like to look back and be like, okay, this is when I was 12 trying to make a how to draw book. And this is, I think like at the age of 26 that I came out with this. I am doing right now the thing I wanted to do for the rest of my life since I was 11, 12 years old. Oh, no way, I have chapter two, <laughs> faces and expressions. There you go. I totally forgot that I'd written another chapter. Here we go. My how to draw book was, uh, was a bit of an effort. Oh, I love it. I love it. So if you're interested, go check out my how to draw book. It's about, oh, not this one, sorry. So now we move on to 2013, no. So now we move on to 2003 at age 13. So these are sketchbook, there you go. Joss's sketchbook. All right, Mark Denton, he's, he's still hanging around. Shade, Balthor Denton. Oh, God, it's the same last name. Naming characters was never my strong suit. I had the same habit with sketchbooks then as I do now. I fill in like the first five pages and then I don't feel great about the sketchbook and I think I'm going to start a new sketchbook, more epic than ever before. And then five pages later, I do the same thing. I love going through old sketchbooks and just seeing the collections of what I thought were my best artworks, you know? It's one of my favorite things that kids show me these days. Kids who watch my channel and come up and show me their art books. It's all their precious things, you know? It's, it's the stuff that they love the most, that they're the most proud of. This is an old map I made and uh, these blood spots are tomato sauce. This is like 18 year old tomato sauce splotches. They've held up well. All right, there you go, that's 2003. Moving on to 2004, age 14. I kept this piece of paper because I liked the drawings, but this was literally on my maths homework. <laughs> I totally paid no attention in anything that wasn't art. Cornelius the gerbil can talk English. He's a chain smoker, sadistic killer. He has access to millions of weapons from nowhere. Always gets hurt himself. Oh, that's wacky. Oh, Cornelius. You cheeky bastard. Oh, that's his bum. Lots of sketches, lots of sketches, lots of sketches, lots of sketches. This was when I was coming up with a Jazz Studios logo. That's the funny thing to me is it was around this time, around 2004, that I actually registered jazzastudios.com. So at the age of 14, I formalized the website that would become my career. <laughs> oh, oh, that's me learning the female body, slowly making progress, obviously a bit unbalanced here. My ladies still had very broad shoulders and very narrow hips. It's a cool dude, weapons and blood and guns. Yep, that's uh, cool stuff. 2005, this is when I was in year 11 and I was 15 years old. I don't know what this is, but I like it. Hello, this is the guy from Treasure Planet. There, there is no getting around that. That's, that unknown planet is treasure planet for Christ's sake. I was such a plagiarist. <laughs> That's the dude from Ch It's this guy. I was just copying this guy. <sighs> I really like treasure planet. This was one of my high school teachers 
And even like looking back at this, this is an exact representation of this high school teacher. I remember passing this around class and like I had people pissing themselves laughing because this was exactly that teacher. I think I got in trouble for drawing this. Joss's cartoon book. We've been a little disorganized lately here in hell, so I decided to divide it into three groups, murderers, adulterers, and lawyers. <laughs> this is me drawing the picture on the previous page that you know wasn't funny, but laughed to make me feel better. Uh, even then I knew my comedy skills weren't up to scratch. It's a pencil drumstick. There we go. Drumming and drawing at the same time. That sounds like a really good art challenge. Leave a comment down below if you want me to, to, to make this a reality one day. This is me working at Target. It was my one and only experience working an actual job, like, you know, being employed, where I knew through that whole experience, I was like, I hate this. I'd never want to actually have a real job. <laughs> I just want to draw pictures all the time. Let's have a look at the 2005 digital pieces. There's this folder called Photoshop Amazings. Bring it on. This was my high school band! I made a logo for my high school band. We called ourselves 42 Meanings. <laughs> this album was called Target Practice. Our track list includes Blonde Chick Black Dress, Nosebleed, You Spin Me. This is so stupid! This was actually a Photoshop colored in piece that I was super, super proud of. Even that, like looking back, this is pretty good for a 15 year old. I'm, I'm still like really proud of this as like a landmark point in my learning to digital paint. And now ladies and gentlemen, we arrived to 2006 where I was 16. By the way, while we're on the topic of high school band, this was the cool high school band that were our competitors. So cool, in fact, I drew their album cover too. This is a whole folder dedicated to the Justice Squad, another one of those series that, again, never turned into anything. This guy was called Green Man or something, and I feel like his power was just to turn stuff green. And that was the joke, because it's not much for power. Anyway, that's the, uh, that's the Justice Squad. Oh, hey, it's Harry Potter. That's sort of a cool depiction. Could you tell what I was, uh, what I was reading at the time. Good old bloody Harry Potter. Oh my God, yes! Yes, I didn't know I kept these. I used to every now and then enjoy like drawing what my ideal studio would be. I've always loved the idea of having an awesome studio space to work in. And so this was like the outside sketch of Jazza Studios. And this is the floor plan. I had a floor plan and everything. The cinema viewing room for the work in progress. There's like boardrooms. There's even like toilet facility. Here we go. There's the sound studio. So we've got a drum kit and a piano and some guitar amplifiers. There's the mixing desk, vocal booths. And then these are just like desks. Where's my office? I think this must have been my office. Center of the universe, as always. <laughs> and then this is like sketching of the stuff I wanted in the offices. The computer desk, mixer, cameras, tablet display, desk workshop. I was like frothing at the mouth over having this stuff. The crazy thing is like, much like with the how to draw book that I really wanted to make and have made today. Like I am so grateful to like, obviously not to this extent, but I have like, a studio space where I get to go to work every day and make content and draw pictures and just have fun with creativity. And that's really what this dream was. I'm just like loving looking back and seeing how like it's always been the same, you know? But that is where this journey is gonna wrap up for today because that took me to my graduation. I graduated at 17. So it was in 2007 that I turned 18. So there you go, that's 11 to 18 and all of the art that I made in that period of time. Now that's not including my Flash cartoons and games and I have other videos reacting to that stuff so I'll link to that in the description if you want to see the similar journeys but with my digital art and animation. But as time has gone along, you can see that really I haven't changed. I'm just like a 28 year old dude doing exactly the same thing he did when he was 11 and I love every second of it. I guess something I'm doing a lot more lately is experimenting with just completely different and unexpected mediums like the cheap marker video and then we have the uh, rainbow marker challenge. I've just been enjoying lately pushing 
the content with different mediums and just trying to be unexpected and just having a lot of fun making entertaining content. Now, of course, if you're interested in pushing yourself and learning and taking your creative journey to new levels and learning from other people who have their own obsessions and have things that they can share with you, I encourage you to go to Skillshare who have sponsored this video kindly and are an amazing place for you to learn digitally, traditionally, whatever it is you're interested in, they have a huge amount of resources that I can highly encourage you to go check out with a link in the card and in the description to get two months of free premium Skillshare membership. There are only 1000 of those available, so go claim them while you can. Go check out Skillshare and a huge thanks to them for sponsoring this video and a huge thanks to you for watching and joining me on the uh, look back at my creative journey. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to Draw With Jazza for more fun with art and to join me as my artistic journey continues and I share that with you every step of the way. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, I'll see you later. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. And while you're at it, check out my shop where I sell eBooks, brushes, photo references, video courses, and more. There's another video you might enjoy from my channel over there. And you can also check out my behind the scenes daily vlog channel, Daily Jazza. That's it for now. And until next time, I'll see you later.